Once I grow more <laughs> The Steyr ADGZ was originally developed as a heavy armor car for the Austrian army. Its designation was M35 military panzer wagon from 1934 and delivered from 1935 to 1937. The Austrian army was using the ADGZ armor car at the time of Anschluss. 12 were used by the army and 15 were used by the police. The Germans used them for police work and some were taken by the SS and used on the Eastern Front and in the Balkans. The SS ordered an additional 25 ADGZ which were delivered in 1942. An interesting feature of this vehicle was that there was no rear. Either end was capable of driving the unit. As part of the initial operations of the invasion of Poland, the SS Heimwehr Danzig used three ADGZ armor cars during the attack on the Polish post office in Danzig and lost one during the battle. And now let's have a look at the box and into the box. The box itself is a stored in nice box, typical uh, for hobby boss. The lead represents a uh, ADGZ in uh, action, uh, probably on the move somewhere in uh, Yugoslavian mountains. Painted on uh, Panzer Grey overall color scheme and no special insignia. This is what you find in the box after lifting the lead. Everything is packed individually. Uh, very nice, very good practice from uh, Hobby Boss. I hope they're going to keep it that way. Let's start with the lower half of the hull. It's a store depart, perhaps the less detail from the entire kit, serving as frame for the entire build. The upper side of the body is very nicely detailed. Its thickness is true to scale, but unfortunately led to some uh, warping, which later on gave me some problems during the build. Sprue A comes in two examples and contains body parts, transmission parts and exterior detail. The Sprue C comes in two examples and contains parts for wheels, machine guns and light guards. Sprue D carries turret parts, body parts and pioneer instruments. Polycaps are very useful when painting the wheels separately. There are 12 tires in the kit, no manufacturer stamp but good and accurate enough threading. The clear parts are transparent and clear as they should be. Photo edge parts very well done and not too abundant but without plastic alternative. So make sure you don't lose them. Decals arrive just like that. I wasn't happy at all with the censorship. Please see the following part of the review for more about decals. Hey guys, uh, let's have a look at the instructions now. Uh, I want to tell you that this is take two. I was uh, editing my video when I discovered that the material I have was barely usable. Quality of the sound of the image was uh, really poor. I had a problem with my uh, camera driver, so uh, I decided to uh, redo this part of the presentation of uh, my review. The bad thing about it is that uh, this presentation is going to lose now some of um, the spontaneity on the, on, the, on the first take, but on the other side, the gain is that now we can uh, pass through the instruction manual with the um, hindsight. Now I'm better suited to give you advice to the ones that they intend to uh, do this building. So let's get started now with the instruction manual. Uh, as you can see, there is a black and white reproduction of the uh, picture we have on the uh, box art. Advice from the manufacturer, uh, the legend for the uh, used symbols during the assembly and the method for applying decals. By the way, be careful with the uh, Hobby Boss uh, decals. They are very easy to tear apart. Actually, one of uh, the decals, the one on the top of the turret, it torn when I uh, was trying to apply it. Fortunately, it was uh, easy to fix it. Just be careful when you're applying those. Now on the second page on the instruction manual we have uh, the uh, sprue layout and the additional parts, the 12 tires, polycaps and such. 
decals as you can see even in this reproduction those decals they were blacked out so the construction itself it starts with the assembly of the axles and the suspension elements it's very simple no problem encounter here whatsoever that's the lateral uh, that's the middle wheel suspension that supports the uh, eight wheels in the center of the vehicle now step two continues with the assembly of the transmission axle and uh, the other parts of the suspension direction bar what did i uh, notice by uh, report to the uh, actual photograph of the vehicle this assembly this bottom assembly under assembly is uh, oversimplified by hobby boss but i never encountered myself a, a better reference so uh, i guess they did uh, the best they could with the available uh, reference material now let's go further step three attaching the other parts of the suspension right as you can see and it's start the assembly of the body plates the lower lower body plates now if you want to uh, take my advice i would let the doors for last because the upper side of the hall this part here had in, in my uh, kit at least a slightly warped so because of that the the doors do not line up properly those photo edge parts they are very easy to work with no problems here but i let them for last because uh, the paint does not adhere so well, so well to, to them so there was a permanent danger of scratching them and damaging the uh, paint so also if you want to paint those details inside as i did then it's best if you let them for last steps five and six go further with the wheel assembly step seven attaching the wheels to the uh, chassis because they are on poly caps it's easy to uh, remove them so i pen them separately and attach it all the way at the end because i weather it first the underside of the vehicle but if you feel more comfortable working with the uh, everything assembled it's easy to do it you have at all times the uh, possibility to uh, add or remove the wheels at your wheel which is very good of course from uh, hobby boss i was telling you about the upper side of the hall now this front plate was quite warped in 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 my uh, in my kit so i had to, i followed the uh, steps on the manual but it proven to be a mistake because the bottom of the door completely misaligned and one of them had a serious band and actually i had to remove one of the locator pins I'm not sure which one it was but one of the four locator pins that they connect the upper hall with the lower hall had to be removed just to release from the uh, warping so i think it's a good idea to let the doors for last for a better fit step nine attaching other uh, elements to the uh, front hall and uh, the rear uh, part of the hall everything is easy going here just if you want to do the uh, louvers open just pay attention to the uh, alignment <clears throat> there is no indication so you have to keep them uh, parallel uh, by yourself those two louvers are not as good those pins here they are just too long and too thin so uh, they are just don't fit inside as shown in here so what i had to do i was to cut one of them secure on one place and then glue pull it pull it back and uh, glue it somehow into the middle but it worked so it's not a big big problem it's easy to overcome even for the beginner step 10 we have the assembly of the a muffler exhaust some footage parts the uh, canisters now if you go going to watch close you're going to see that those are actually water canisters so i decided to replace them with uh, gasoline jerry cans because i figured out that vehicle is not in a humanitarian uh, mission to uh, distribute water around so i did replace those canisters with some bronco ones uh, gasoline canisters it won't make a huge difference they are barely seen in the completed model but i wanted it that way and i did it that way by the way they are uh, those uh, can the jerry cans they assembly very nice and I'm going to use them with the uh, Africa Corps vehicles where I find they are more adequate. Now step 11, more uh, external details. 
Now this assembly for the uh, tool supports, they are the fiddliest part of this build, but again, if you want to uh, replace it with uh, just one uh, strip of uh, whatever material you have, uh, maybe an old uh, photo edge, it's easy to do. You don't have to do all these three parts because again, very little is going to be seen once the model completed. The small machine guns, they are not drilled, so if you want a more realistic representation, you have to drill yourself the uh, muzzle. I don't know what this is, maybe maybe the honk, I don't know. It looks funny, but again, uh, photo edge part and plastic, but it's easy to assemble the uh, size of the photo edge is decent. They give you here and they tell you for scale, but it is not. I think they uh, designed those instructions on uh, letter size and then convert it to A4, so I noticed that they are slightly narrower than the completed assembly so don't get fooled of that, you're never going to match them but on the footage part you have the bending marks so you cannot go wrong just ignore those now again step 12 it shows you that you, you have a choice of uh, light guards uh, the problem is if you do following the instructions you would be unable to paint them inside once the those grills they are, they're going to be installed so what i did i attached the grills first to the uh, light guards and then i uh, spray them from inside 13th step is the uh, attachment to uh, lower hull to upper hull now it's up to you if you want to carry all those details with you or you can do this step before attaching all these small parts in permanent risk of damage so i think it's good idea to glue those together then to attach the doors and then you go forward and with all those small parts that they are in risk of being uh, knocked down and finally the machine guns and the uh, 20 millimeter cannon that goes into the turret turret it's even easy to uh, assembly and yes everything goes uh, nicely together as a conclusion to, to, to this build the build itself what I can say that the only problem of warping of this uh, upper hull, uh, I never encountered no kind of fitting issue, so everything goes uh, smooth, very good uh, quality of the kit. Uh, another uh, thing that was quite often sanctioned in other reviews was the complete lack of um, interior, except for machine guns, of course. Also, usual for uh, Hobby Boss boxes are uh, those leaflets when they uh, where they present their uh, other available products this is a ust 29e1 heavy tank i not even know that exists it's not my cup of tea but it looks like well detailed uh, build for whoever is interested in uh, post-war american tanks other releases uh, russian this 5b truck looking good I'd like to build one of those, but again, it's not necessarily in my area of interest. It looks good, I have to say it's good. This is our release that we're building just now, and you see it's pointing, pointing out some features. Yes, the wheels, very nice details. Not so much about the machine guns, the uh, jerry guns, we talk about it. So, uh, yeah, it looks good. And you're going to see it builds in more than this center model. Popular Liberation Army Air Force P-51DK Mustang. Again, not my cup of tea, but it looks good. And I built their uh, IR-80, a Romanian fighter. And I was more than happy with the uh, kit itself. So I think they are in the, in the right paths. Uh, again, a very attractive model that I would love to build one day. A new variant of uh, Suhoi 30 MKK Flanker G, a German flag Panzer 1A with um, ammunition trailer. Looks good, interesting. And eventually a two centimeter flag 38 late version with its trailer with SDA H51. It's interesting. I, I built one from uh, Dragon a while ago. They resemble a bit, but for what I can see in, the, in this um, picture, it should be a good build. Now let's move to the conflict area. I was saying earlier that I received those decals in this state, and as you can see, the um, NSVastica or SS divisional uh, insignia, they were obliterated on the box, on the instruction manuals and everything, on the calls and such. 
Uh, I was outraged at the beginning because <clears throat> my the content of my package that I paid the full price for it was violated. Somebody opened it, go into it and modify the contents without telling me. That was I was really enraged about that. That that's that is a violation of my proprietary rights. Okay, and I wanted to do exactly what a kid does. I'm going to do exactly the opposite. So I wanted to build. This version that belonged to uh, SS Division Prince Eugen, deployed in uh, Yugoslavia. And I wanted to uh, replace the uh, Prince Eugen rune with, with uh, a hand draw uh, uh, sign, which is very easy. I, I start practicing on my pl plastic spawn as I usually do. But as I go in deep into the research, I figure out that actually that is a wrong variant from Hobby Boss. Did not use this version of the vehicle. They did use the other one produced by Steyr, which had different light guards and also it had some additional toolbox or storage boxes underneath. So that is the incorrect version. I went that far that I paint already those uh, brown strips, but then I, uh, when, when my research confirmed that uh, I had the wrong choice, uh, then I went and uh, I paint uh, everything panzer ground. For the sake of accuracy, I did not do Prince Eugen markings, but I still cannot have uh, good thoughts about my sensor, whatever who is. And also, I'd like to say that actually it was in my favor that they censor my decals because studying um, more in detail Prince Eugen division, which was nowhere in my plans, it happens that I find out something very interesting about the history of my country, Romania, uh, that Prince Eugen was led for a few years by uh, Arthur Pleps which was the highest ranking Romanian born SS. We had the general rank in, um, in SS and as a completely unusual distinction, a cuff band was issued with his name and one of the regiments of uh, SS Prince Eugen division, I think number three regiment or second regiment, can't remember for sure, it received its name. I think it was number three or uh, num the third regiment, but that is not important. The important thing is that the censorship still exists and you try to combat Nazi behaving like a Nazi, that's stupid. And second of all, at all actually you draw my attention into studying the Nazi history, what you try to avoid. So make sure what you do next time. That's the main scheme of the uh, vehicle. I did not go with that uh, because I didn't like that association of uh, the calls here, considered too fiddly. And uh, again, I'm not sure that's the right version for the uh, vehicle that was besieging the uh, postal office in Danzig. So, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, again, you see SS insignia obliterated. So eventually I, I have this side for one of um, Wehrmacht vehicles, this one. Hobby Boss does not never mention the units, whatever, but very similar markings I have seen on um, ADGZs deployed in uh, Russia, so an early uh, Barbarossa campaign, so perhaps that belongs there. And that's it about my uh, choice of uh, camouflage scheme. So, I dropped this because I wasn't sure I have the correct variant. I choose this because I do not stand very well the censorship, but then I have to drop this again because it's not the correct vehicle. It's the other version of it. And then I choose one that I consider it having the most striking appearance. The problem when you depict a monochromatic vehicle the problem is you need more elements to make it stand out so that's why I, uh, you're going to see I paint the uh, jerry cans on um, different colors and I try to add as much color as possible <coughs> to uh, interfere a little bit with the monochromatic scheme also I add some uh, color variation uh, you're going to see on the third episode of this video series how the painting turned out uh, thank you very much for uh, following please excuse my uh, radical tone Anyhow, I want to make a last statement. I am not a Nazi or neo-Nazi supporter. I'm just a history guy. I like my uh, history. I read a lot. Anytime I have the opportunity, I uh, read history. I study history. So um, there it comes. I model any kind of subject. You, you have seen me perhaps in the channel uh, modeling Russian subjects or USSR at the time without any kind of uh, restriction. I even bought... Uh, 
a zero, so I'm going to, ja to, to do a Japanese aircraft and one of my group builds I am into, I'm going to do an Italian aircraft, so I treat everybody in equal terms, so I want to be treated in equal terms as a customer, as a final user of this product. Thank you very much for your attention, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time!